Welcome to Wheels Up with Sunrise on Wheels. I'm Michelle Newman. Today's program is all about New York City. And like all Wheels Up episodes, it has three segments. First, I'll take you on a trip, exploring all five boroughs. Next, we'll craft with Caroline, making a city landscape and a Statue of Liberty crown and torch. Next, I hope you'll shout out your answers and play along with New York City trivia. New York City has been called many things. The Big Apple, the Great American Melting Pot, and the City That Never Sleeps. With over 8 million residents and over 40 million visitors a year, it's easy to understand how this bustling city got its nicknames. At first glance, visitors can't help but notice the city's skyscrapers. But nestled among the city's tall buildings are incredible kid-friendly delights and adventures. Today I want to take you on a trip to explore some of my favorite spots in my home. New York City is a collection of many neighborhoods scattered among the city's five boroughs. Manhattan, Staten Island, Brooklyn, Queens, and the Bronx. Moving from one city neighborhood to the next may be like passing from one country to another with almost half of all families speaking a language other than English at home. New York has the most people and is the most international city in the country. It's home to the United Nations. While it is in New York City, it's really a special international enclave. The UN was created in 1945 at the end of World War II. It's an association of independent countries that have agreed to work together to prevent and end wars. All 195 member and observer countries send permanent delegations to New York. It's an important location on the east side of Manhattan. To begin our tour of the city, let's begin by looking at all the cool ways we can get around. The subway provides continuous 24-7 service and is one of the most extensive metro systems in the world. It can be a quick way to travel around the city to avoid the traffic. Next, yellow taxis are plentiful and can be hailed curbside on demand with a wave of the arm. Just take note of the light on top of the cab. If the light is out, it's already occupied. When the light is on, it's free and should stop. Maybe you want to ride a bike. City bikes are easy to rent, but remember you need your own helmet, and they aren't meant for kids, and city streets are not that easy to maneuver. One of my favorite new ways of getting around the city is on the water. For a little less than $3, you can take a ride on the East River on the New York City Ferry. On a warm summer day, the views can't be beat. Let's dive into a look at Manhattan, which while the smallest in size, is packed with most of the big name attractions and is the heart of it all. In fact, many New Yorkers call Manhattan the city, even though it's only one of the five boroughs. Just like in Spider-Man game, this island is where the really amazing skyscrapers can be found, and the game mostly depicts them correctly. At the tip of the island, One World Trade Center is the tallest building in New York. This funny triangle-shaped building is called the Flatiron Building. When I was a little girl, the Empire State Building was the tallest building in the world. It is 102 stories tall, is shown in almost every New York City movie, and the Observation Terrace gives you an incredible view of New York. Do you recognize this sunburst pattern stainless steel topped building? It's the Chrysler Building. With its triangle shaped vaulted windows and distinctive eagle gargoyles near the top, this skyscraper has been featured in many blockbuster movies. The island of Manhattan is surrounded by the Hudson, East, and Harlem Rivers and is connected to the rest of the world through 21 bridges and 15 tunnels. While its bridges are beautiful during the day, they are truly magical at night when the lights twinkle. Here's my home in the neighborhood called the Upper East Side. With a beautiful promenade along the East River, it's known for its mix of classic brownstones and upscale high-rises. Museum Mile is a stretch of Fifth Avenue next to Central Park with many amazing museums, including the Metropolitan Museum of Art and the Guggenheim. Only a few steps away is the most famous park in the world, Central Park. It was the very first public park in America, and it's hard to believe these 840 acres 
are in the middle of this urban jungle and filled with so much fun. From skaters busting moves near the mall, Shakespeare lovers watching live performances, Beetle fans in strawberry fields, children sailing remote-controlled boats, ice skating during the winter, boat riding in the summer. It's a perfect place to ride a bike. Or how about rock climbing on over two million-year-old rocks? It's home to one of five New York City zoos, so penguins, grizzly bears, and a few barking seals are another highlight. Now let's head over to the Upper West Side. Nestled between Riverside and Central Park, it's one of the greenest parts of Manhattan. Home to Lincoln Center and one of my favorite museums, the American Museum of Natural History. Do you recognize it from the Night at the Museum movies? While the animals aren't alive like in the movie, the rooms are filled with dioramas. Unlike other museums, these are vivid and lifelike re- creations in which taxidermied animals seem to breathe and the scene seems to stretch for miles. Highlights include the gigantic life-size dinosaurs, the amazing Easter Island Moai statue, even if it doesn't talk like in the movies, and we wouldn't want to miss underwater ocean life and spot the massive great blue whale. You can even explore the solar system. It's home to the planetarium. There are head-spinning adventures here, exploring the wonders of outer space. Outside the museum, the day before Thanksgiving, this is where the giant balloons receiving their helium injections are inflated. It's very crowded, but a fun thing to watch. Next, let's move further south on the island to Rockefeller Plaza, home to NBC, Radio City Music Hall, and in the winter, it has a fun ice skating rink. And it's home to a spectacular Christmas tree. This is also where I had my first office when I moved to New York. Midtown Manhattan is one of the busiest places in New York City and is great for people who love crowds and bright lights. Times Square, 42nd Street, is a major commercial intersection. Brightly adorned with billboards and advertisements, Times Square is the hub of the Broadway Theater District, one of the world's busiest pedestrian areas, and site of the annual New Year's Eve ball drop shown around the world. Continuing south, Chelsea is a neighborhood that is home to many artists, and we can even walk the High Line Park, a raised site of greenery made from an abandoned railroad track. It definitely gives us a different perspective on city life. Next, let's take a quick peek at the hip neighborhood of Tribeca, It's full of cobblestone streets lined with trendy boutique shops and restaurants. And it's a great place to grab a slice of pie. No, not the fruit or pumpkin variety, but delicious pizza pie. And you can find it on almost every block in New York. Even the dollar slices are delicious. And now, here we are in Lower Manhattan. It's where the city started in the 1600s. And where skyscrapers, financial powerhouses cultural landmarks, and gleaming new developments provide a look into both our country's past and a gateway to its future. It's where George Washington took the first presidential oath on the balcony of the city's federal hall. It's also the site of one of our nation's gravest tragedies, the September 11, 2001 attacks on the World Trade Center. This complex includes the 9-11 Memorial Museum and reflection pools. Set amongst a grove of trees, the pools sit in the footprints of the Twin Towers and bear the names of the nearly 3,000 people who died that day. History is everywhere in Lower Manhattan, even in places that are not always the most obvious. The Dutch settlers landed on the tip of Manhattan in 1623, naming their new home New Amsterdam and lining up a battery of cannons to defend it. Today, the 23-acre park is the largest public open space in the downtown section of Manhattan. It contains a whimsical carousel. You can catch a boat to Ellis Island, where from the 1890s to 1950, more than 12 million immigrants entered the United States. Did you know that more than a third of all Americans can trace their family history back to Ellis Island? One of the first things that people saw upon arrival was the Statue of Liberty, and that's our next stop a gift of friendship from the people of France to the United States. 
It's been on its own island since 1886 and is so beautiful. Next, let's take another boat. In the Battery, we could catch Staten Island Ferry. Built before any bridges, it transports both commuters and tourists between Manhattan and Staten Island. This five-mile, 25-minute ride, which is free, by the way, offers amazing water views of New York Harbor and Lady Liberty. And by riding the ferry, we can visit Staten Island. The most suburban, contains the fewest people, and is the furthest south of the five boroughs of New York. Next, let's explore Brooklyn. While at one time it was its own city, that was back in the 1800s, it's another New York City borough. It's on the western tip of Long Island, separated from Manhattan by the East River. The Atlantic Ocean is to the south, and the borough of Queens is to the north. It has the most people of any borough in New York. Brooklyn is known for its cultural, social, and ethnic diversity, an independent art scene, distinctive neighborhoods, and a distinctive architectural heritage. To get from Manhattan, we can cross the East River on the Brooklyn Bridge, a brilliant feat of 19th century engineering. You can walk it, bike it, or drive across it. There's even a dedicated walkway on the Brooklyn Bridge above the roaring car traffic, so it's a wonderful stroll. In Brooklyn, the foot of the bridge takes us to the beautiful neighborhood of Brooklyn Heights. Originally named Clover Hill back when it was pasture land, Brooklyn Heights was New York's first suburb, with residents commuting to Manhattan via ferry. It is filled with many historic homes, carriage houses, and even some cobblestone streets and alleys. It's still home to many famous folks, and the Brooklyn Heights Promenade provides stunning views of Manhattan and Lady Liberty and is featured in many New York television shows and movies. Only steps away is the amazing and evolving 85-acre waterfront Brooklyn Bridge Park. It's filled with lovely green spaces, with lovely water views, soccer fields, and basketball courts, along with many fun and exciting playgrounds. Another favorite spot of mine in Brooklyn Heights is Plymouth Church of the Pilgrims. Abraham Lincoln worshipped here twice in 1860s, and Plymouth was a stop on the Underground Railroad and a number of enslaved Americans sheltered in the basement on their way to freedom. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King preached here, delivering a sermon titled The American Dream. Let's explore one more neighborhood in Brooklyn. Found at the very end, right on the Atlantic Ocean, is the neighborhood called Coney Island, home to the city's most famous beach and boardwalk. You can ride America's oldest roller coaster, the Cyclone, enjoy many rides and attractions at Luna Park, or stroll on the boardwalk on the amazing beachfront. And just down the boardwalk is New York City's aquarium. Time to move to our fourth New York City borough, Queens, also on Long Island and just north of Brooklyn. It's across the East River from Manhattan and the Bronx. It is one of the most diverse places in the world, and it's the largest borough by area. It's the site of two busy airports, LaGuardia and JFK. It's the site of City Field, the baseball stadium of the New York Mets, and hosts the annual U.S. Open Tennis Tournament in the Billie Jean King National Tennis Center. All of these are in Flushing Meadows Corona Park, home also to the Queen Zoo and New York Hall of Science. Our last and final stop is the Bronx, our fifth and final borough, New York City's northernmost borough, home to Yankee Stadium, the baseball park of the New York Yankees, and where you can find the Bronx Zoo, the world's largest metropolitan zoo, which spans 265 acres and houses over 6,000 animals. Well, it's time for our journey around New York City to come to an end. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of my favorite neighborhoods. Do you have a favorite pearl? I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi, my name is Caroline, and I'm so excited to do arts and crafts with you today. Today's video was all about New York City, so today we're going to make two crafts. One is going to be a New York City skyline craft, and the other one is going to be a craft of the Statue of Liberty. I hope you have fun! For the skyline craft, you will need a piece of paper, a black crayon for the buildings, and some watercolor paint. 
First, we're gonna draw the skyline with our black crayon. So, to start, we're gonna make a bridge. So you can make a line down like that, and then another one here, and then some lines down. And then you can do, I need to make this a little bit longer, and then one line down like that, and then a line a little bit under straight across, and then another line down, and then straight across, and then that's gonna be the bridge. And then we're gonna make some designs in the center. So I'm just gonna do some lines this way, and then some lines across. Now I'm gonna do this all the way. And then, I'm gonna make these a little bit longer actually. And then I'm gonna draw another line across. This is gonna be the top of it. And then I'm gonna draw some diagonal lines. And now we're gonna make the other side of the bridge. So I'm gonna put another line down like that. And then some more lines. And then there's gonna be a building here. And this isn't going to be completely how the skyline looks, but it's just going to be a bunch of different buildings. And then we're also going to put the Empire State Building and the Statue of Liberty. So now I'm going to do some other buildings. They can be all different sizes, like they can go tall, some are taller than others. And now I'm gonna do the Empire State Building. So it's the tallest building out of these. So I'm gonna do it really tall. And then it's kind of pointy at the top. And then back down. And then there's kind of like a point at the top. Then some more buildings. And now we're gonna do the Statue of Liberty. So, it's also pretty tall, but it's not as tall as the Empire State Building. This is gonna be her crown. And then she's also holding a torch. So that's her torch. And then it goes back down. And then there's gonna be some flames in her torch. And now that's the whole skyline. Now I'm gonna add some more buildings to my skyline and then I'm gonna color all of my buildings in. Now that I've colored it all in, now I'm gonna do the shadow underneath all of the buildings. So now I did my shadow and all I did was I just used my black crayon and I drew a little bit more underneath all of the buildings. So now underneath my skyline is gonna be the water. So I'm gonna use my watercolor and I'm gonna dip into the blue. And if you get it onto your buildings, it's okay because the crayon will repel the watercolor. So it won't let it, it won't let you paint on it. So if you get it on here, it just, you can't really see it. So I'm gonna do this all under my buildings. So now I'm going to do the sky above my buildings and it's going to be when the sun is setting. So it's going to be red and orange and yellow. So I'm going to use my watercolor and do that. And for the bridge, since I didn't color it in, I'm only going to do it in this part so that it looks like you could see the sky through the bridge. So I'm going to put some red. And now I'm gonna do the rest of it all on top. So this is how my skyline turned out and I hope you had fun making yours. 
So first, we're gonna make the Statue of Liberty's crown. So you need your paper plate and your green crayon. And I'm gonna color mine green because today it looks green, but it actually used to be a copper color. So first, I'm gonna color my whole entire plate green with my green crayon. So now I colored my whole entire plate green. And now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut it in half. So now we're gonna cut on one of our pieces, we're gonna cut out this part so that you only have the pieces, the part with like the ridges left. So now I have my part that's cut out and now I'm gonna make the actual spikes that go on top of the crown. So if you cut your piece in half, then you can take each half and cut it again in half. Now you have four triangles. And then we're gonna glue them on. So you could put some glue on the front that's gonna go on like the ridges. And then you can glue it on like that. And then you can glue the rest of yours on all the way around. And you might need to put a lot of glue so that it stays. So now I finished my crown and now we're gonna make the torch. So first I'm gonna cover my paper towel roll in my green paper. And so I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna put it all over my paper. And you don't have to do this step, but I'm going to. So now that I have my glue on, I'm gonna place my tape paper towel roll on the end of my paper so that there's some paper at the top. And then I'm going to start to roll it all the way across and then kind of like smooth it as you go. And now at the top, I'm going to tuck it into my paper towel roll. So now it's all covered, and as you can see, mine's kind of unrolled, so I'm gonna put a little bit more glue. And now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna cut four little slits in my paper towel roll at the top. So, I'm gonna do one here. Make sure they're not too long, but like that, and just place them all the way around. So now I'm gonna make my flames, but if you don't have the paper towel roll that I've been using, you can also use a cup and you can do the exact same thing. You can cut the four slits and you can cover it or you can color it with your green crayon. So to make the flames, you can use your, if you want, you could use a pencil first and I'm gonna fold my paper one way and then the other way again. And then I'm going to make a shape. Make sure it's on the, the side that isn't folded. And it's almost like a leaf shape like that. So it looks like a flame. And then I'm gonna cut this out. So now I finished cutting out four, the four of my flames. And my flames are yellow because on the actual Statue of Liberty, they're gold, so yellow is the closest thing to gold, but you can also make yours red and orange and yellow or whatever colors you want. So now, I'm just going to slide them in to the splits that I made so that they look like the flames on the torch. And they're going all the way around. And you can make less flames or you can put more, as many as you want. And now I have my torch and my crown. I hope you had fun making these New York City crafts with me. Bye! Welcome to New York City Trivia. There are 10 questions, 4 answers, only one of which is correct. I hope you'll play along. 
with my friends Janet, Sherry, and Linda. Who's ready to play? Question number one. How many boroughs are there in New York City? A, two, B, three, C, four, or D, five? How many boroughs are there in New York? And answers, please. I bet you guys all know this, this one. And the answer is five. I hope so. We're all New Yorkers. We have right. <laughs> that would be sad if we got that wrong. Question number two. Where did immigrants come to America in New York City? A, the Empire State Building, B, Ellis Island, C, the Statue of Liberty, or D, Times Square? And the answer is Ellis Island. Question number three. Trip. What is the name of the public park located at the southern tip of Manhattan Island? A, the Battery, B, Downtown Park. C, Manhattan Bridge Park, or D, Liberty Park? It could be all of those, but it's not. It's only one. Hmm. And the answer, and I, the oh, battery. Wrong. Oh, I wasn't right. I said Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> Question number four. Which of these is an old name for New York City? A, New Orleans, B, New Delhi, C, New Amsterdam, or D, New Albany? Which one would be the name for New York City? And the answer is New Amsterdam. Question number five. Name this New York City landmark. Can you see it? A, the Flatiron Building. B, the Chrysler Building. C, the Empire State Building. Or D, the United Nations. It's got that interesting triangle top pop. It's got those Pretty iconic. Lots of movies. Yeah. And the answer is the Chrysler Building. Question number six. New York City is home to the country's largest zoo, which features more than 6,000 animals. What is the name of the zoo? Is it A, Central Park Zoo, B, Queen Zoo, C, Prospect Park Zoo, or D, the Bronx Zoo. I've been to every one of those zoos. Yeah, it's the largest zoo in the, in the country. It is, and the answer is the Bronx Zoo. I haven't been to Prospect Park. Where's that, in Queens? Brooklyn. Yeah, no, it's in Brooklyn. Look at that, Question number seven. Which of the New York City's five boroughs is home to JFK International Airport and LaGuardia Airport? Is it A, Manhattan, B, Brooklyn, C, Queens, or D, the Bronx? Which one is home to the airports? And the answer is Queens. Question number eight. What is the nickname for New York City? The Big Orange, the Big Apple, the Big Pie, or the Big City? Oh. The answer is B, Big Apple. Question number nine. How many people live in New York City? Around one million, B, around three million, C, around five million, or D, around eight million? I know you said it, but. <laughs> so what do you think? If you can't remember, the answer is please, and the answer is eight million. Uh, so far. Gotta, Have you gotten yes. every single one right so far? <laughs> yes. Question <laughs> number 10. <laughs> What would you see if you walked along the Brooklyn Heights promenade? A, the Bronx, B, the Atlantic Ocean, C, the Manhattan skyline, or D, Coney Island? This is where I originally lived before I moved to the Upper East Side. Great place to live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the answer is the Manhattan skyline. Okay, let's get let's our leaderboard. Sherry, 100%. And Sherry, 10 out of 10. Well, how did you do? I hope you enjoyed and played along. See you next time.